versus Skill Cat Red. Skill Cat Red trying to hold on to their BlizzCon dreams. And I'm really happy to see this because Villai is the answer, I think a lot of people would say, to the Jungle Cleave composition. The Shadow Priest brings such fantastic utility. You've got the Master Spell where you can remove those traps you see on Radapai, forces the cross crowd control. You've got Life Grip to deny the traps. And then you've just also got some hybrid healing as well as a lot of damage and a very tanky member of the team. So Shadow Priest definitely very strong in this matchup and Villai one of the best. Yeah, there's no question. Uh, I really like seeing Maro playing the Moonkin. You know, he plays Mage at a phenomenal level and I think a lot of the skills you have as a Mage really uh, are, are great on the Moonkin as well. I mean, you have the same sort of spammable CC, same amount of burst damage, same kind of role on the roster. So him picking that up is, is really good and shows making a movie, making adjustments that they need. And you can see from this camera angle right now, the pincer maneuver coming in from the double casters, but actually Zinyaki playing fantastically, getting the mind control on Villai, completely exploiting his positioning there. That's a full crowd control, meaning the trap going over onto Radapai, who's interestingly playing the Relentless. And what Relentless tells me is that they are very confident in their ability to survive these crowd control chains. They're not expecting to get bursted. And a big part of that is going to be the Shadow Priest and the Moonkin's tankiness, basically, in this matchup. Yeah, Maro could be a little bit vulnerable in this situation. I mean, Valet on the Shadow Priest is going to have a lot of support. With the Void Shift, he's going to be able to change his HP with Maro's. If Maro ever gets in trouble, or if he ever gets in trouble, Radapai getting CC'd quite a bit here, but with the Earthen Shield Totem, should make Maro more than tanky enough. And I really feel like for making a movie, this matchup is about basically running Zuniaki out of mana. So Zuniaki, Zuniaki, he has to do a great job managing his mana, going for drinks when he can, or they need to play really aggressive and try to take down Maro early. Yeah, no, and it looks like they are going for the aggressive option right now. We see Zuniaki pushing up across the map, landing that fear, mind control, cross crowd control. Zuniaki is on fire so far in this game. He's been controlling Villai, he's been getting the fears, making the plays for his team, and there's been a lot of pressure on Maro. His health bar hasn't been stabilized for quite a while. Radapai, of course, on that restoration shaman. Yes, he's going to have a fantastic mana pool, but he needs to get the casts out after the nerfs. Otherwise, he's going to really struggle to keep Maro alive. Yeah, but you can see Radapai, look at his mana. It basically hasn't gone down <laughs> at all at this point in the game. Maro still sitting relatively pretty, you know, has the bar skin. There's a bash over on Radapai. Another nice setup coming in from Skillcap Red. Maro could be in some trouble. He's in the Moonkin form. Goes for the Solar Beam onto Zuniaki, but unfortunately for him, Zuniaki gets out, manages to land the fear on Radapai, but still, the Barkskin was enough to defuse this setup coming in from Skillcap Red. Yeah, and that was quite a lot of damage coming in there. Adam Rex popped his offensive cooldowns, increasing his damage done to Maro, but Maro well mitigated that with the Bark skin, but now you can see he doesn't have too many defensive coins. He's taking a fair bit of damage here. No renewal, no bark skin. Maro definitely the target of choice. If they can get crowd control over onto Radapai with that relentless talent, it could be dangerous. Villai reads that. He's spamming out the mind controls, and we see the Urban Wall Totem, which should delay the attack. Yep, Maro with a bash over on a Cassidy. They're looking for some burst setup over on a him. Maybe some CC on a Zuniaki could be nice, but one of the main CCs they have is that root beam, and Adam Rex will be able to respond to that with the freedom call coming out from, or the master's call coming in from that hunter pet, which allows Zuniaki to get out of that root, get out of that solar beam, and once again push in for these aggressive plays we're seeing right now with the mind control onto Valet, with the trap onto Ratapai. Skillcap Red, they have been on fire with their cross CC, but this haven't been able to find the damage so far in this matchup to really push through the defensives of making a movie. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons we really like the composition from making a movie. They have two hybrids. There's a lot of self-healing, a lot of defensive cooldowns they can use to basically uh, deny Skillcat Red on their kill attempts. And you can see the blue bar. It's taking a while to burn through it on Zinyaki. is a beautiful triple fear comes in from Villai. But they are making progress there. The incarnation from Maro right now, that huge armored chicken is going to be forcing Skillcat Red behind the pillar. They're just resetting Cassidy, throwing out a couple of off heals. But this is, the, this is the win for making a movie. If they can keep this up, they're going to burn Zinyaki. You can see the health bar stuff starting to wane as they're falling under pressure. It's going to be harder for them to push in in these conditions. Yeah, making a movie, what I like what they're doing is they're keeping the pressure on Zuniaki. Keep him dotted up. When he pushes into the midfield, silence him. You know, put him into a stun. Make sure he's pressured when he wants to cross the map. And really, he has to second guess himself. And those fears on a Ratapire are what is going to really help them land a kill. If Zuniaki can't afford to push in and land those fears, I really feel like Skillcap Red is going to have a difficult time closing out this game. So I want to see making a movie continue the pressure on Zuniaki anytime he's playing in the midfield like this. Yeah, we can see Skillcap actually swapping over a bit of their damage to Villa, and these swaps actually do burn down the mana of Radapai a little bit. He's down to about 50% right now, and Zinyaki somehow, someway, has taken a little lead because of that. You can see Master's Call on him right now, enabling him to run towards Radapai, look for the 
fear. He baits out the Tremor Totem there without using fear. So nice play from Zinni. He's going to be chasing Radapai, trying to land that. But such good protection coming out of making a movie, denying Zunyaki from doing what he wants to do in this situation. But Zunyaki's just playing it fantastically regardless, always keeping his team topped off and doing fantastic on mana as well. Yeah, and what's funny, as we move into dampening, Radapai's mana is actually relatively even with Zunyaki. So they might not even have that win condition as we move forward. But Zunyaki kind of struggling to keep his team alive, especially as he's moving in for those fears. Ratapai dropping the Earthen Shield totem. We kind of talked about that cooldown yesterday. You can see it's kind of a circle on the ground. The totem provides great protection for his team. It's a minute-long cooldown, but if Ratapai can get that down before he goes into crowd control, it's going to make it very difficult for them to land the burst that they need. Yep, no, for sure. But on the flip side, they kind of baited out that cooldown there. Now they have their offensives. You can see Inclination for Cassidy, as well as the Eagle from Adam Rex. Both of those cooldowns events available offensively. I'd love to see them commit one to force the bark skin on Mara and then use the incarnation to push for the kill here. We see Mara dropping a little bit low. They haven't committed anything just yet. He's sitting in bare form. They're actually going for a splitting strategy, which is really going to burn Radapai on mana. He needs to heal both party members, which means Riptides on both. It means casted heals on both, and that's really expensive, as well as the fact it's going to shut down more damage coming out of making a movie. Yeah, Radapai is really struggling with the strategy. Can't top off Mara or Valet. They're both susceptible in the situation. Zuniaki once again, playing in the midfield, looking for a fear. There's the Bash Trap over on Radapai. Valet looking for a mind control to shut down the fear. Is he going to be able to keep that up? He does. He runs Zuniaki very far away. And now Ratapai, as a result, he can get out the heals that he needs. Valet has been on fire in this matchup, denying Zuniaki these key, key fears that they really need. Yeah, we don't see many priests, honestly, uh, in the European scene. There's a lot of druids, a lot of other classes. But Vilay and Zuniaki, some of the best. Zuniaki, of course, traditionally played the Shadow Priest himself. So these guys have gone back and forth for years. I've actually played with both of them in my past as well. Two fantastic players to play with. And they're throwing it in this series, right? Like, Zuniaki is pushing up, going for the plays. Vilay is locking him down. They're going back and forth. Maro right now, though, is the person to watch that incarnation cooldown up once again, force out the aspect of the turtle. And now that Dampling starting to stack, this is where we can see making a movie, finding their prime. They're starting to burn down. Zuniaki is going to start struggling really badly here. Yeah, there's a tipping, for, uh, a tipping point for Priest in the matchup when they can get their penance out. You know, they can keep purge the wicket up on targets, and that's enough healing to sustain. That's great. But as you move forward into Dampening, that's not enough. Zuniaki is going to have to throw in the Shadow Men's, and that's when you can really see the Discipline Priest mana struggle moving forward into the game. Adam Rex, you know, his pet got killed off, so it went behind the pillar, res that up. Uh, there's going to be no contention there from Adapai, Mara, or Valet that's going to allow him to do that. As they know, they just need to stand out in the open. They need to get out their consistent pressure. Uh, basically, if making a movie can live long enough, they will end up winning the game. They just have to make sure they can keep Morrow alive. Yep. I, I mean, they have to keep him alive. It's not the easiest thing against Jungle Cleave. We've already seen how scary that composition is in this tournament. Three of them, of course, vying at the top ranks right now in the European scene. But on the flip side, Zuniaki is actually still doing a fantastic job. Normally, we'd say that the Discipline Priest's problem is, yes, once the Dampling stack's high enough, you can't go for the offensive fears, but he's still landing them. He's still making the plays. Morrow low on health right now. Barkskin renewal. Big defensive cooldowns forced out. And as you can see, Incarnation up in about a minute for Cassidy. That could be a big win condition here for Skill Cap. Yeah, no question about it. Zuniaki getting caught into the silence. Ratapai into a full trap, though. Gets the Earthen Shield Totem down once again. Morrow's going to be able to tank through this damage with the Thorns as well. So when he has that Thorns up, Cassidy and Adam Rex have to sort of think twice. Adam Rex running away behind the pillar. Gets a life gripped away by Zuniaki. That was Pain Suppression and Rapture. Major defensives coming in from Zuniaki to keep his team alive. Cassidy pushing in, though. They smell blood in the water. They want to take Morrow down. There's the Void Ship from Belay to keep Morrow stable. Fear over on Aratapai. Belay in a lot of trouble. Forcing the dispersion as well. Skill Cap Red doing an excellent job. This is the race to the finish here. You can see Skill Cap Red. Their health bars will never be topped off again in this game. They need to go for the kill. No trinket on Radapai. He's not playing a Void Shift. The big five-minute cooldown has been forced out, and Moro has nothing. Incarnation in 10 seconds. They're looking for the kill here. Spirit Link comes out. That's the last major defensive for making a movie. Incarnation in five. This is going to be close. Yeah, Zuniaki, you can see he's pushing in, wants to land that fear over on Radapai once again. Moro, they need to get the pressure out that they need. Cyclone's coming in. Managed to land one onto Cassidy, giving Radapai a little bit of time to stabilize. Earthen Shield Totem gets dropped out as well. That's sort of the last line of defense for making a movie. Once that fades, they're going to be very vulnerable and susceptible. Zuniaki running out of time, though. No mana left. Gets disarmed. Looking for the fear. Valet silences them. Trap on Radapai gets md Zuniaki once again looking for the full fear on Radapai. Marl very vulnerable. Has the renewal. Should be able to survive, but Adam Rex in the meantime gets taken down. 
And that's one of the scary things about this matchup for Skellcap Red is they have to get aggressive if they want to win, but they can be caught in these situations where they're midfield and the damage. The footing here, we asked you guys though in Twitch chat, who do you think is going to be able to take this series? And 65% of you think making a movie are going to crush the dreams of Skillcap Red going to BlizzCon. And now in Ash Main's fall, we're going to get to see if making a movie can get there, can get on to match point. I'm kind of curious why Skillcap Red chose this map. Normally, you'd see the jungle pick a smaller map, so, you know, Zuniaki can push in and get those fears. Maybe this is kind of telling to the strategy that they want. Maybe they're going to do what Zico sort of suggested, where Zuniaki plays a little bit more passive, not in the midfield. So far, it doesn't seem like it, as he seems to be running down Ratapai very early on. Yeah, I, I'm a little curious about this as well because one of the reasons we like seeing the casters on these big open maps such as Ash Remains Fall is you can see the positioning right now. Maro, Villai, Radapai all spread out, all far away. It makes it difficult for the melee to get damage, to get interrupts across, and that's why you're going to see lots of master spells from Villai. Also just makes it harder for Zunyaki to push in, and he has still been going for that in the early game. I will be curious, like you say, Ben, so to see as we go into Dampling, maybe he does play a little bit more defensively. Yep, no question about it. All right, we'll have to see. Cassidy, Adam Rex, basically everyone is sort of stable in the situation. Morrow taking a little bit of burst now, but Ratapai in a very good position in the far back, spamming out the healing surges. Adam Rex moving in for some crowd control. Ratapai just running around the pillar, sort of trying to deny it as long as possible, like we kind of talked about. It's a stall game for making a movie. They can make the game last long enough, eventually Zuniaki won't be able to heal through the pressure. Yep, and Radapai in a little bit of an interesting position there, actually walked up towards Zunyaki's pillar, going to give him an easy fear here, as we see damage swapped over to Villai, but this is the thing, if you attack Villai, Maro comes out with the Cyclones, you can see a full one onto Adam Rex, that's going to be three Cyclones in a row right there, denying any possible opportunities for Skillcat Red, and if they hit Maro, then Villai will be casting the Master Spells, he'll be casting, he'll be getting the Life Grips, casting the Off Heals, there's so much utility on this team, that's what makes it so hard for Skillcat Red to break through. Yep. Making a movie sort of falling behind in the situation a little bit. Adam Rex moving in once again. And maybe putting pressure over onto Ratapai yeah. isn't necessarily the, the worst thing. You know, he has the support of Marlon and Valet, but Ratapai on a Shaman really hasn't been tested that much. And maybe Skillcap Red wants to sort of take advantage of that. Yeah, I, I, I like it. I mean, we talked about the split strategy in the pregame, something that did work out for them reasonably well. They're actually going to be both connecting over onto Radapai. They're committing the incarnation here. They're going for the big play. Radapai, though, getting off healed, getting the Cyclones, getting that hybrid utility from his partners on making a movie. Walks out without even trading the Astral Shift. Yeah, and as soon as they went over on a Radapai, Morrow, he pops the incarnation. He wanted to punish them quite a bit, but Skill Cap Red, they're, they're in a pretty safe spot. Zuniaki getting caught into a fear, but Adam Rex and Cassidy, we sort of talked about the hybrid heals, heal, heals coming in from Morrow and Valet, but Cassidy, he definitely has some strong yep. heals himself, so he can sustain his HP. You can see him throwing out some regrowth when he needs it. That's going to allow Zuniaki to save a little bit of mana as well, so moving into the late game, maybe we don't see what happened on the Grand Arena. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something we have to talk about. The double trinkets coming out from DPS also quite impactful. One thing that I've really liked is we see Radapai actually taking a fair bit of damage from range right now. One thing I really like that Maro has been doing is every single time Cassidy incants, that's when Maro uses his incarnation because Moonkin offensives are very, very scary, and he uses it to force Skillcap Red to think twice about pushing in during their own offensive pushes. Yeah, Radapai taking some damage, and it seems like Adam Rex and Cassidy, they're just going after everyone. Maybe not as much CC, no, as I say that they land a full trap on Ratapai. Maro has to trink it out, get in bear form as soon as possible to avoid some damage. Zuniaki charging in once again, but Valet with the mind flays, just snaring him up, making it difficult, but he eventually does land that crucial fear on Ratapai. Ratapai's playing the relentless trinket talent, so instead of being able to break CC basically whenever he wants, all crowd control will be reduced on him, really limiting the window that Skill Cap ha Red has to take down Maro or Valet. They're, they're, trying to, they're trying to challenge Ratapai quite a bit here. They're just swapping back and forth, attacking him, attacking Maro trying to force a mistake on the side of making a movie. I like this, but they are running down just a little bit here. I think they're going to be totally fine, though. Zunyaki, once he comes out of the mind control there, should be able to top off his team. His man is doing fantastically. Even though he's pushing in, you can see he's using the reason you bring a Discipline Priest to any game ever, and the only reason really right now is for their damage, and they do a lot of damage, a shed load, really, and you can see he's also pushing in for the fears, and this is, this is where they need to excel. They need to be getting out of that damage, putting out as much pressure as possible, and the swapping strategy is also making Radapai second-guess himself, and since he is playing that ult, 
they could potentially expose a weakness. Yeah, got to find midfield right now. Valet and Morrow supporting with the Cyclones. Morrow gets bashed up, pressure over onto him, silence on Zuniaki. Both teams looking to get aggressive with the full trap on Ratapai. Earthen Shield Totem gets dropped out. Nice fear, though. Almost feared Morrow out of that, but unfortunately it broke, and he's able to stand in that Totem once again. You can see that sort of ring in the midfield. If they are inside of that, they are not going to die. It's just so much damage reduction right now for Resto Shamans. It, it makes making a movie feel very safe. It does, and I mean, that's the advantage of these hybrid comps, right? Like, you're expecting to go to Dampening, you're expecting to have the benefits of the Moonkin and the Shadow Priest playing through to you, but as Dampening stacks, it not only does it affect the healer for them, it affects all three members. I mean, yes, it's nice to have those extra heals going to Dampening, because Zunyaki, poor guy, uh, almost all by himself, with Cassidy helping out a little bit. We see Incarnation actually coming out of Maro here. He's getting caught up in the stuns, trades out Barkskin, trades out Thorns, and Incarnation is still available for Cassidy. This could be an opening for Skillcap Red. Well, think about what's on the line for Skillcap Red in this matchup. If they lose the series, their BlizzCon dreams, done. So it can be very frustrating when you're going up against a team that it feels almost bulletproof. You know, Morrow on the Moonkin, so tanky, Valet tanky, and Ratapai supporting them quite nicely. So they need to make sure they're staying focused, especially as we move into dampening. They have to keep their eye on the prize, make sure they're focused up on taking down Morrow, continuing to land their CC chains, just have a solid game plan. Bash now over onto Ratapai. Morrow taking some burst. Looks like Cassidy wants to get aggressive with his incarnation and the Dark Archangel. This could, could potentially be a kill here for Skillcap Red. Blade does have the Void Shift, but he's holding on to it for now. Doesn't want to have to trade it out preemptively. Mickey Movie needs to make sure they're not overlapping their defensive cooldowns, and they should be able to hold on much longer. I really like what Cassidy's doing right now. He forced Morrow lower into the bear form. Now he's swapping to Ratapai, making it exceedingly difficult for them. Even the life swap wouldn't save them necessarily in this situation since two members are dying but a solid Irvin Wall Totem on tomorrow, on to Ratapai, going to mitigate the entirety of the end of that incarnation. Now Maro able to get out of bear form, get out the cyclone, start building momentum in his favor. And this is where it gets dangerous for Skillcap Red. They don't have the offensive cooldowns. They are starting to wane on mana and health bars and making a movie once again as Dampling starts to stack. This is where they're going to excel. Yep, Ratapai into the trap, bash on Valet. Nice cross CC, Valet trinkets out. Doesn't want to fall behind, he wants to make sure he can support, and that's the kind of trinket rotation we like to see from making a movie. If a Ratapai is caught into a trap, well, he has to make sure if Morrow's in trouble, he trinkets out, sort of act as that support role for Morrow, so Ratapai doesn't fall too far behind. Now Disarm over on Zuniaki, and this is the point in dampening where it can become very scary for a Discipline Priest. Mind control on Zuniaki, I really like what Valet does. He gets a dot on all three, dots on all three members, puts the mind control on Zuniaki, and while that mind control is active, Adam Rex is rotting down, Cassidy's rotting down. Unfortunately for him, Zuniaki manages to stabilize his team quite quickly out of that CC, but it can be a very effective strategy moving forward into the game. Zuniaki's doing such a good job. Every single time he pushes on Ratapai, he baits out the Tremor Totem before using his Fear, then kills that off, then lands the full Fears. So he's doing he's never getting really outplayed in the situation. He's always getting those crowd controls, doing a great job healing, but his team just doesn't have the damage to break through right now. Of course, Dampling also works in their favor. It's going to make it a little bit harder for making a movie's hybrids to sustain through it. But at the same time, Ratapai's mana is looking way better than it did in game one. He's looking very comfortable in this game. Haven't been too many close calls. They still have that kind of ultimate defensive cooldown, the life swap on Vilai as well. So it's really looking difficult for them. And Zuniaki, every time he cross cuts across, like he said earlier in game one, then they just punish him so hard with damage, with crowd control, just makes it so difficult for him. Yeah, it really makes him second guess himself. And they need that added offense. They added damage from Zuniaki, they added fears. And if they don't have that, I really don't see them winning. I don't think they're going to outmana Ratapai at all. But a nice trap on Ratapai. It's, uh, I think it was a master spell by Valet. That's one of the no another great utilities Shadow Priests have is when Ratapai goes into the trap, they have to interrupt the master spell or Valet can just cast that, remove the CC from Ratapai, freeing him up. And now making a movie is feeling very comfortable to push in. This is not the position you want to be in for Scale Cap Red. Everyone's sort of turtling behind the pillar and they realize they can't just sit there. They have to play a little bit aggressive. So Ratap or Zuniaki responds with... Um, some of his cooldowns, the Rapture to keep his team stable. But this is this is do or die for Scalecap Red. They're falling so far behind. Every tick on dampening, every star surge, every master spell, Zuniaki's dreams of BlizzCon.
fought further and further away. Skill capped red looking worse and worse in this matchup. They need to find something for making a movie or a brick wall. We see Cassidy dropping low now. They're in the urban wall totem, making it exceedingly hard for them to generate anything at this moment in time. Zinyaki just has to play defensively. He can't chase across the fears anymore. He can't afford to. Mara dropping low though. Life swap still available. They trade out the spirit link here. So quite a big major defensive cooldown, but they have so many making a movie just looking fantastic in this game. One more little uh -oh. bit of damage. Could be scary. Here comes the incarnation from Cassidy though. This is surely the last chance. Yeah, Morrow could be in some trouble here. Trap on Ratapai. Valet has to respond appropriately. Might have to throw out the Void Shift. He does. Doesn't want to be too close to Cassidy and Adam Rex. They could make a swap onto him once again at 30% dampening. Things are becoming very unstable for both teams. Ratapai actually doesn't really have any defensive left. Can Skill Cap Red do it? Can they take down Morrow? He gets lower and lower. Fear on Azuniaki. Bash on Cassidy. Doing everything they can to stay alive. Morrow hanging on by a thread. Ratapai gets the Earthen Shield totem down. That's going to make Morrow very tanky. He's going to be able to potentially survive. Will he live? Fear on Ratapai. Skill Cap Red still looking to close out this game. Even at 32% dampening, that Urban Wall totem just keeps Mauro alive there. But he might still go down as soon as the Urban Wall expires. So much damage. And Radapai, who traded out that Spirit Link very preemptively earlier in this game, might get punished as Mauro dropping low, sitting in the bear form, desperately trying to get out the Cyclones. But Cassidy gives him the bite and says 1 1, skill cap red. <laughs> he managed to do it, but yeah, that really does go to show, you know, that when that totem goes. Yesterday, I'm, I'm doing some one and a half hour Radapai Shaman TR action. He actually told me that they were going to run this, but obviously, you know, I, I'm not going to say yeah, that. Yeah, you, you got <laughs> to keep the comps concealed until they actually come out. Sometimes yeah. we are going to be talking to the players, trying to figure out what they are going to be playing a little bit earlier on. And Radapai, with all of his hours of experience here, going to try to find another win on Tolveron Arena. And one of the things that we need to know, a larger map now coming into play, man. Yeah, there was a, a really nice moment for Skill Cap Red in that last matchup where I said, this is not the position you want to be in. Zuniaki, Adam Rex, and Cassidy, they're all behind the pillar, all rotting down. It's 30% dampening. If you're an inexperienced team, you don't know what to do. You freeze. But they, they knew exactly what they had to do. They had to continue the pressure, and it's not that easy of a call to make. Everyone pushes out. You're all low on HP, but that's ultimately the moment that won them the game. Yeah, and, and if you are and you're a player, like, honestly, that just comes down to experience. Like, there's been a bunch of times where these guys did sit behind the pillar, and they lost those games. They definitely lost those games. As Jungle, sometimes you just have to go for through it, and that's sometimes the way they win the games, right? They were able to pull out a miracle victory there. Maybe some mistakes on Radapai at the end of the game uh, to secure it. But one of the things I do want to highlight is Tolvaron Arena is the biggest map in the pool. Obviously, an easy pick for making a movie. Skill Cap just won on Asher Mains, which is arguably the second biggest map. So they're both picking big maps here. I wouldn't necessarily give an edge to making a movie based on how that last game went. Yep, uh, that's that's right. But normally you'd expect on this large map for the you know the Wizards to have kind of an advantage. But with the way Zuniak is playing, you can see he's just positioning himself at this large pillar, just spamming out the smites. That's the damage and utility that the Discipline Priest really does bring. Every time he does damage, he heals up his team. It's also very efficient for him to use penances and smite to heal up his team. So if he can afford to get these casts out, that's when the Discipline Priest really shines. Yeah, and I mean, Discipline Priest, I think it, it's fair to say, is one of the hardest healers to play because you have these games right now which are very easy right like you're just spamming out smite being very efficient penance atonements uh, purge the wicked all of those damaging abilities coming in for incredibly efficient healing but as soon as you start falling behind that's when hey you don't have that global to get the atonement out you don't have the global to be efficient with smite you start falling behind on your damage spamming out shadow men's and then suddenly you're just the worst version of like a restoration shaman right like discipline priests aren't meant to be played that way but if you fall behind you have to we see Zuniaki though never really seems to fall behind. He gets a nice fear over onto Villai. They have a 3v1 setup here on tomorrow, but the Urban Wall Totem, we saw how much of a wall that was in dampening. So you can bet before dampening, it's going to be very effective keeping Mara alive. I think Zuniaki, he's realized they're not going to win with sort of an all in strategy at this point. So he decided, although he was very close to Ratify, he just threw his fear over onto Villai. So Villai couldn't support him, he couldn't throw out the mind controls. And I actually think it's just as important that Skill Cap Red is getting CC on Villai as it is on Ratify because 
because Shadow Priest just offers so much support uh, in this current build of BFA. Morrow, once again, midfield, trying to get some pressure out. Zuniaki playing very far away. is going to be moving forward, looking for a fear once again, but Vlay always in the midfield, trying to deny Zuniaki. Anything he can do, he gets silenced into the disarm. Vlay looking for a fear as well, and this is where making a move, he can start generating some pressure. Yeah, and you can see they're trying to do it right now. Cassidy taking a little bit of damage. I should be fine. No, the power barrier from Zinyaki, well placed uh, to mitigate anything coming in from Mara. There we see a beautiful fear onto Radapai once again. This kind of jungle cleave setup, getting the traps, getting the stuns, getting the fears, just overwhelming the healer with crowd control. And then now, as Cassidy we saw from game two, which we really like this adaptation, when they don't have the crowd control, he's swapping a little bit of damage over onto Radapai, giving him something to think about. Zinyaki at the same time, Mara says, "Hey, I'll give you something to think about," <laughs> as he forces him behind the pillar. Yep. Zuniaki once again, efficient smites coming out. There's a penance, and he's going to be able to contribute some damage. In the meantime, they actually they got the Earthen Wall Totem out of the way, so this is an opportunity for Skullcap Red to potentially get a little aggressive. Zuniaki though in the midfield, going to be rotting down. Valet putting out lots of pressure with his VTs. Mind Blast coming in as well. Could have the Disarm and Silence available for Zuniaki. That would be good for or for um, as Valet might have it available for Zuniaki, so they can start generating a little bit of pressure, but. Seems like skill cap red, they're going to be stable. And honestly, I, I really don't see this game, uh, despite maybe a little bit of luck, really closing out before dampening, just with how durable making a movie is. Yeah, so I mean, I don't think they. Skillcap Red's goal is to finish the game before dampening. Their goal is to see what they can force. And obviously the easiest condition is the mana pool on Radapai, although since he's on the Restoration Shaman and happy to see him playing that, uh, it's going to be harder. But like Zico said, the other big goal that Skillcap Red can shoot for is forcing out that Void Shift, the five-minute defensive cooldown on the Shadow Priest that swaps life between the Shadow Priest and whoever he uses it on. If they can force that, it means it won't be available for those late incarnations as dampening starts to stack. Zuniaki caught up in the fear right now, but Adam Rex looks like he's going to be able to sit through this just fine. He's holding on to those defensive cooldowns, the exhilaration heal, and the aspects of the turtle immunity are going to be the big ones to watch on the Hunter. I think Phil has actually swapped over to the Shadow Crushers game, which I'm not sure if he's playing in game one or two. Um, I actually really like the choice because it's going to be more damage against this double melee composition from Skillcap Red. But what do you lose out for it? Uh, Shadow or Death. Okay, so lose out on the Shadow or Death, just trying to go for a more consistent pressure, and that really plays into the strategy of making a movie. They're trying to get consistent damage out. If you can get the uh, the Void Crash over on Adamax and Cassidy, that's just more damage that Juniaki has to heal through. You know, the Shadow or Death really not getting too much value, uh, especially because Adam, Rex, and Cassidy aren't into that death range very often. Yeah, and I mean, it's a great choice, right? Like, he recognizes probably Shadow or Death was almost zero of his damage, unless he was killing the pets in the last two games. It's an extra spell that's doing good damage, forcing Zunyaki to think about his mana pool even harder. Uh, and I mean, that's these little things do matter, especially as the game's going to go very long. Causing that could be the difference between like 100,000 damage across the entire game or something like that. Uh, we see Mara dropping a little bit low once again. Radapai is actually, again in this game, been struggling a little bit. He's even on mana with Zinyaki at this point. It's getting swapped over too. Here comes the incarnation from Cassidy. Trinket's out of the cyclone. Life grip rooted by Adam Rex. Big play from him, but <laughs> unfortunately the other will tell him says so he might have actually yeah, bothered. That would have been a disaster. Away from it. Maybe uh, a little bit lucky on the side of making a movie. Could you imagine Radapai dropping while Totem Blade just grips him out? Would have been screaming. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, but yeah, Morrow's looking to get aggressive now with his incarnation. He's pushing in, but you can see Skullcap Red. They're respecting the cooldown, playing a little bit defensive, but not too defensive. Once Morrow pushes in, Cassidy's looking to get aggressive, aggressive with the Bastion over onto Radapai. Adam Rex moving in for a trap. Morrow could be in some trouble right now. Blay has the Void Shift, still just doing good damage. Mana in favor of... It's relatively even potentially maybe a little bit on Zuniaki we're at 12% dampening. Maro throws out the thorns on himself and every time that's up, like I said, the thorns basically reverses damage. It will do damage to Adam Rex and Cassidy every time they attack Maro. So it's kind of it, it forces Adam Rex and Cassidy to make a decision. Do they want to take that additional damage? And it Whoa! looks like, it looks like no they, do. Yes, <laughs> they do. Yes, they do. They're like, whatever, thorns. What do you know, Venruki? And they just one-shot Maro. <laughs> I like it. 60% of the time, we're going to see comfort from making a movie, and the question is, will it be enough, Zeke? Yeah, I think that 
The main thing we want to watch here is Morrow's Ice Form with Acrolol's Vendetta. If those two cooldowns get overlapped in the opener, that is really, really bad for making a movie. Preferably, we want to see Morrow use that Ice Form in that first setup, and then we want to see Acrolol's using that Vendetta a little bit later on. Yeah, stagger the cooldown so Skill Cap Red doesn't get so much value if they put up the Roar Sacrifice and that negates the Vendetta and the Ice Form. That's bad news um, for making a movie, and they really don't get an efficient trade. Have to see how we open up here. Skill Cap Red taking sort of a defensive position. Cassidy most likely is just going to be going for a pounce on Acro as soon as he uh, opens. Acro on the other side of things it wants to get that cheap shot on Cassidy. So both Stealthy is going to be playing it patient while we have sort of a 2v2 play out. Yeah, in the 2v2, no one's going to want to commit to that because, of course, if Acrolols opens first, Cassidy stuns him. If Cassidy opens first, Acrolols will stun him. So both the Stealthers just kind of feeling the map right now, seeing if they can find an opening. But one of the things we should definitely talk about now that Mauro has brought out the Frost Mage is that Frigid Wind's artifact trait. We've talked about it a lot over the last couple of days, basically buffing the damage you do when you pop your offensive cooldowns on the Icy Veins. You can see that's why he's actually running the Ice Form is because in PvE, where, where the the artifact traits are balanced, you have this benefit every three minutes, whereas in PvP, you can spick it to a talent which makes it 33% uptime, 20 second duration on this buff for a one minute cooldown is very, very powerful. And that's why when they're saying that you could stagger the offensive cooldowns on the Rogue Mage Priest, it's because Morrow will blow you up by himself with that up. It's also undispellable. If you dispel Ice Form, you keep the buff. Yep. Yeah, it's really good. Zuniaki getting the double fear. Cassidy opening up on Acro. That was beautifully done by Skill Cap Red. They're going to have the pressure. Bash now over onto Ratapai. Acro trying to respond to the kidney shot onto Cassidy. Morrow popping that ice, uh, ice form, looking to get aggressive, but so far, they're really not finding the damage. Yep, they're struggling actually with their opener. That was very well played. Actually duking out the premonition there on Zunyaki, meaning a full poly would be landed. Well done by Mara. We can see the cooldowns though not, weren't able to be staggered too well. They felt like they had to commit Vendetta to the swap to force out something on the side of Skillcap Red, but so far to no avail. Skillcap Red with a fantastic opener here. Now they're looking to reverse the pressure. They use the incarnation, forces out the trinket and the evasion on Acrolaws. Excellent start for Skillcap. Yeah, excellently done by Zuniaki, but Cassidy getting bursted down right now. Cheap shot on Zuniaki, Morrow looking for the Polymorph. Paint suppression coming in onto Cassidy. He's gonna be completely fine because he got, there's a trap on Ratapai now. Acro in some trouble. He has to run away. He has no defensives, no trinket, no vanish, no evasion, no nothing. Adam Rex knows he's so vulnerable as a target. Acro running into Cassidy, Ratapai flailing to keep him alive with the Shadowmance. Gets interrupted on the pendants. Adam Rex comes over with an interrupt as well, and Acro could just go down into stun right here, right now. Ratapai lands the pain suppression, but Zuniaki there with the fear. The Zor talking about the assassination rogue they're just so vulnerable acro somehow surviving but that is it skill cap red they're going to be sending making a movie home and this is a composition that's given is given making a movie quite a few difficulties throughout the year and now we look at skill cap red and we can say feed versus the fake zebras we're all tied up one and one who is going to find themselves on match point who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament keep in mind folks we're doing a brand new thing you have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in battle for azeroth